Hey Robot fans, welcome back to the build. When we last left off, we were successfully controlling our spinning saber with the inner saber circuit we had built in the last video, and today we are going to tackle the all-important outer saber circuit. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Come on people, who wants to deal with all this wiring when a circuit board can make all these connections for you? PCBWay makes it easy and inexpensive by giving you five boards for just five bucks. Make your projects cleaner and more efficient by checking out the PCBWay link in the description and thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Looking back to our circuit board here, the last stage of setting up the inner circuit was connecting it to the outer saber via Bluetooth, which gave us our first little node of our outer saber circuit. But the jump start from the inner saber doesn't end there. If we look at a planogram of our current board, we can find quite a few other nodes to copy over from the inner side. This will give us a nice head start on the outer saber. This is what that looks like. These uh, boards are basically the same as we had on the inside saber, just a couple differences. I have a beefier step down for the NeoPixels because they're gonna draw a lot of current and we're gonna be using a different type of battery on the outside than we are on the inside. But other than that, pretty much the same thing we talked about last time. I do think this is as good a time as any to talk about these boards that I use. Um, I got a lot of questions about why I use such a large board. Well, I did want to make a board to test each of the individual nodes separately just because when I was doing this previously I ran into a lot of problems and when everything's on one board it's kind of hard to diagnose. But as far as why I make these boards so big, so when you order circuit boards you are kind of forced to order at least five at a time and a lot of times I only need one. So rather than end up with a drawer full of boards, which is what I was currently doing, I decided to make them business card sized and I put a logo on it. I put my uh, URL on it and then a little message on the back. So I figure as I start accumulating these, which I am, I can just start handing them out at conventions to people who you know, recognize the channel or want to hear more about the channel. It's kind of just a unique way to give out a business card and it saves some waste and I don't know, helps the environment probably, so there's that too. But anyway, we can move on to the microcontroller now. So for the main lights and sounds of the Sabre, I'm following this great blog post from All About Circuits. I'll link it in the description. I followed this for the general construction of the actual Sabre blades, and I, I deviated a bit from the power setup and some of the hardware components, but for the most part, the software is being used directly, and pretty much most of the hardware is similar to this blog post. Uh, the blog recommends using a Pro Micro for the microcontroller which is what I'm going to have set up now. I'll probably shift this over to another Pike C Addo for the final circuit, but to get everything set up, the Pro Micro should work just fine. Okay, so I finished setting up the outer circuit here with the All About Circuits set up. Things are getting a little bit rat's nesty right here, but don't worry, this is all temporary. I also built another temporary Grand Inquisitor Saber right here so we can see how the blades are going to ignite and extinguish. And yeah, this piece of software, this All About Circuit software is really incredible. It's clearly, clearly written by a software developer. The code is super complex. I have a hard time <laughs> figuring out how I'm going to edit this code, but it's great. So the main input here is a rotary encoder. And if I press the button, the blades ignite and the sound goes on. The sound is really cool because it's all generated through the Arduino. There's no MP3 player. There's no external files. It's all generated from, they're called sound fonts and they're really crazy looking hexadecimal codes. I don't know. This is getting really far beyond my code writing ability, but it's cool. And what else the sound does is it's controlled by this MPU 6050 inertial measurement unit. So as I move this around, you can hear those lightsaber hums. So my goal is to get this calibrated with the spin so that when it spins, you get that that woof, 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 woof that we really want. That would be really cool. But overall, there's a lot of menus and a lot of functionality in this Sabre that I will never use. So I'm going to spend some time getting rid of some of this hardware. I think I can get rid of this rotary encoder. I think this is a little too big for what we need. And I can get rid of some of this software and then we have to start dialing it into the inner Sabre circuit. So if you remember, we had these Bluetooth connection here. So we have to start getting the user interface of the inner circuit to control this rather than this rotary encoder because we're not going to be wanting to play with the outside of the saber we just want everything controlled from the inside of the saber so yeah that's going to be the next task and next time you see this board it's going to look a lot different and it's going to be a lot more functional so stay tuned for that <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, so maybe it doesn't look that much different, but it is a lot more functional, which is what we really want here. Um, it is now running completely off of battery power. So if we turn on the two sides of the Sabre, you can see that once the Bluetooth connection is made, we can use the user interface on the inside circuit to turn the blades on. And we can also turn them off. So the function of the rotary coder has been replaced with the user interface on the inner Sabre side and it's all controlled through Bluetooth. And so the way that the Sabre is actually going to work is I'm going to push the uh, ignite button. Then if you look up here, I can still do the motor. And then I can extinguish the blades. And that's it. That's pretty much all the functionality that we need for this Sabre. So I think it's safe to say the outer Sabre circuit is complete. And that means we get a new prototype. Yes, check out this specimen of beauty. Adding the circuit onto this outer ring really took this thing to a whole nother level. I almost don't even want to cover this thing up with skins because it just looks so awesome. But we will get into all of this wiring and all of this construction more in the next video. And for now, we can just focus on doing this. <laughs> we can control the outer blades with the hilt. That was the goal all along, and this means that we have successfully taken all of the nodes from that circuit board and put them onto their final place on the Saber successfully, and everything seems to be working as it should. There's sound coming out, which is a little quieter than I was hoping for, but we're going to get more into that in the next video. For now, we can ignite the blades, we can extinguish the blades, which means we can do our first full test of the inner Saber circuit and the outer Saber circuit working together. Something's not quite right here. Hmm. Well, that was disappointing, especially for me. <laughs> um, yeah, so as soon as I started spinning that thing, I could feel something was wrong. There was a lot more resistance. There was a lot of grinding happening that has never happened before. Um, I think I found what the problem is. If you look here, I'll get some close-up pictures, but if you look here, you can see that there's a pretty significant gap between this black piece and this outer piece. Uh, that's what it should be like, but as you come around to this side, I think that gap closes a little bit, and it's not quite as prominent as it is on the other side. So either this piece here or this piece here is a little off-center. I think it's fixable. I think I can just... Uh, sand those two pieces down so that's the good news the bad news is i don't think i could do that without taking the whole thing apart um but the good news again is that i was going to take it apart anyway for the next video because we have to take all this out anyway so the forecast for the future is positive we will fix this the forecast for this video <laughs> the remainder of this video that you're watching is on it's a little more bleak um, i don't think we're gonna be able to get it up and running by the end of this video so this is where we're gonna end it I know, I'm going to start the sad music now. I'm going to start playing the, the sad score. Um, yeah, I'm super bummed. I was really looking forward to spinning this thing all at once. And I was going to play my subscribe animation right as the music hit its, hit its peak. But alas, here we are in this, this pit of despair. That's what you can expect from uh, this channel. Just ups and downs. It's a, it's a roller coaster of emotion. So I'm going to try to make this really sad. I'm going to pump up that music a little bit. I'm going to trail off and just say, you know, like, subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. And I guess I'll, I'll see you guys next time, maybe. Bye.